Hello guys, Deets Magley Studios here, and I'm back with another Rogue One minifigure review. This is the big one of this wave. This is the U-Wing, and it is the only Rebel-focused set in the entire wave, which is very interesting to me, considering that Rogue One is based on the Rebel Alliance. But it's also based on the Empire, so I can get that. Today we have five different figures, all from the Rebel Alliance. It's actually very strange. In this set, and Krennic's Imperial Shuttle, they don't include opposing sides. They only include one side of the battle, which is interesting, but I like it. Our first figure is the U-Wing pilot, and I just gotta say, this is probably my favorite figure out of the entire set. I love the Rebel Alliance pilot outfits, and getting one in dark blue is just so fantastic. I love the design, even though the face is a reprint of one we've already gotten. I just love it so much. I just can't express how much this is my favorite figure. This is my favorite Rebel Alliance figure. Out of all of LEGO Star Wars, probably so far. My favorite Imperial figure, as you know if you watched one of my older videos, is the Tank Trooper. So Rogue One has some of the best Star Wars minifigures, in my opinion, we've had yet. I love the design, the printing on the legs, the awesome uh, little computer thing on the chest. On the back, we do have the basic vest detailing, and we do have a second face. It's kind of sad how it does show through, which is uh, just an upset version of the front face. Or kind of worried, or maybe even crashing. Yeah, so I think this face was used before. I'm not completely sure on that. You guys can correct me in the comments. But this is one of my favorite figures yet, and he is the U-Wing pilot. Next we have Sergeant Jin Erso. This is a very surprising figure because I don't really like anything about it as it's shown right here. The This weapon is very weird. I don't know what it is. It looks like some sort of stick to like swing around and beat up some stormtroopers with. It's just a weird design. Uh, she has this pistol. I do like that pistol. Then she has this very awkwardly placed poncho on the front that doesn't fit at all. It just doesn't fit well. You can see, I'll take off the head. The head, the face also doesn't look much like the actress. You can see the top, it's kept on by this pack over her shoulder. And then this is what it looks like. And it's supposed to fit over there and then you put the pack over, but it just doesn't fit very well over the top of a minifigure torso. This is probably the one thing that makes me really not like this figure. Well, it's the first of two things. The torso print is amazing, and I don't know why they're showing it. I really like that, and it's extremely accurate. And the back is just uh, what you'd expect from the back of that. So the face print, I can deal with it. But then... They gave her this hat. It is accurate, I guess, but I think they also should have included a hairpiece. We've only seen her so far with her hair or wearing an imperial helmet. We haven't really seen her with a hat. So I think we should have gotten a hat in this, even though the hair does stick out around the sides like that, which does look cool. I think we should have gotten an actual hairpiece for her because it's so important to her character. Also, these this pair of goggles is a click-on pair on the top, and I think this makes the hat look very bad. I think the hat looks very good with the goggles on, but it just doesn't look good with them off. It looks very weird. It looks kind of like a duck bill. But overall, this figure is pretty disappointing to me. I think if they left her like this, with this hairpiece, I think that would have been more fitting, or maybe something else, I'm not sure. But I just think any kind of hairpiece would be very much more fitting for what we've seen of this character so far. Next up, we have Captain Cassian Andor. I just gotta say, I really love this figure. It might just be the dark blue for me, as dark blue and azure have always been some of my favorite Lego colors. But I think this guy just looks fantastic. The printing is so reminiscent of Han Solo that it kind of makes me mad with his uh, Hoth outfit, if you're a part of the community that agrees that it's dark blue, such as me. Uh, I think it looks really good though. It has enough differences to differentiate it from Han, and my favorite part is definitely the nougat legs. 
I think they should have been dual molded because it looks pretty weird on the side with this getting cut off. But I think I can do with this and the Nougat and Dark Blue transformation is just so great. And it isn't as bad as I thought with his uh, binoculars being, when the tan is printed on blue, it's kind of transparent and a darker tan than when it's printed on Nougat. But I think this one's pretty good and I think it worked out very well. Nice to get sand hands. His face looks very reminiscent of the actor. And I think we could have gotten a better hairpiece, maybe the Lloyd hairpiece from Ninjago. But I think this one does it. Uh, he's also got the fuzz on the back and the back of his belt. And it looks pretty weird from the back with just the new legs, I gotta admit. And he just comes with a normal blaster rifle in this uh, gunmetal gray color, which is common for the Resistance or Rebel Alliance, I've noticed in the past year of Star Wars sets. This is Bistan. He is our first alien character that we've gotten in Rogue One that I have reviewed yet. There is another one, I'm not sure of his name, but he comes in Krennic's Imperial Shuttle, and I hope to review that set soon. But now, with Bistan, I think he looks very accurate to the movie. Of what we've seen of him in the movie so far, in the promotional pictures, this kind of looks like his face. I don't think they got the coloring perfect. But I think it does well, and I think the olive green was a pretty good choice for what we've seen of his outfit and promotional material also. Uh, I like his hand color, how it matches the head. The head mold is very intricate, and I do like it, even though it looked kind of derpy with the printing. Uh, here's another one of the blaster rifles. And then we got the straps on the legs. Straps on the back and a backpack. And he, you'll notice he does have this little green hood under there, which really closes it up very well. I, w I was afraid that this ring would be kind of open. It would leave a hole in the back, but I think that dealt with that very well. Uh, if you take off the head, you can see what it has underneath, and it just fits on like that. And I think the only con with this minifigure that I can really see comes from playability, which is how you can't rotate the head more than this. It only goes just a tiny bit. And I think more rotation would have been useful for a character that's going to be like having a gun pointed sideways maybe, like if he's shooting like that. It'd be really awesome to have his head pointed in the direction that he's shooting. But overall, I can deal with it. Lastly, we have this Rebel Trooper who is kind of reminiscent, or just the helmet is kind of reminiscent, of the original Rebel helmets from the beginning of A New Hope, and I like that a lot. You'll especially notice that when I turn it sideways, in which it looks like a jungle camo version of that helmet, which I think is really cool. He's got the normal blaster, as many of the characters before, and I only have one problem with this minifigure, and it's the torso print. It's kind of weird how this long bandolier, with probably ammo in there, ammo in there, just gets cut off right there and there. I think he should have had his own leg print, as this is a leg print that is shared with another Rogue One Rebel Soldier. And maybe one more, I'm not sure about that right now. But I think it looks okay, and the torso is really the only problem I have with it. On the back, he's got this strap, and I think that works perfectly. He has also got a hood, which reminds me of an Endor Trooper. So it kind of makes me think that this trooper would be used more on Scarif in the jungle areas rather than on Jetta, like the other troopers that are more gray and brown. I think the green troopers will be more used on Scarif. All right, so this has been the Rogue One minifig review of the U-Wing. In my order of favorite figures, this would be my favorite, this would be my second favorite, then third, then fourth, and then my least favorite is Jin, just because of the accessories they gave her. They could have executed her character design so much better, and I just think that it's kind of upsetting that they didn't as the main character of the film. Yeah, overall, this is a great set for minifigures. Uh, you get, again, only Rebel Alliance minifigures and no Imperial minifigures, which is interesting, but I can see why they did it, so if you want to have a full battle, you gotta get two sets. You know LEGO always wants the money. Alright, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you around!